sigma notation, a convenient notation for the sum of the terms of a finite sequence is called summation notation or sigma notation. It's because it involves the uppercase Greek letter sigma. Sigma tells us to add. In front of the letter sigma is the explicit formula or the rule of the sequence. If there is a variable in the formula, we have n here, then our index must be the same. Other letters can be used you'll often see K, J, or I. If you have K here, 3K, then it must be K is equal to 1 below. Our index must match the variable. At the bottom, we see N is equal to 1. This is our lower limit. It's where we start. At the top of the letter, we see 5. This is our upper limit. It tells us where to stop. The values of N are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We simply substitute these values in for n. So first of all, we're going to write our sequence. So 3n is equal to 3 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 3 plus 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5. So we have 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15. When we add these together, we would get 45. So our sequence is 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. And our series is 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15. Now let's find the first four partial sums of the sequence. S sub 1 is equal to A sub 1, which is equal to 3. S sub 2 is equal to A sub 1 plus A sub 2, which is equal to 3 plus 6, which is 9. A sub 3 is equal to A sub 1 plus A sub 2 plus A sub 3, which is equal to 3 plus 6 plus 9, which is 18. And then S sub 4 is equal to A sub 1 plus a sub 2, plus a sub 3, plus a sub 4, which is 3 plus 6, plus 9, plus 12, which is equal to 30. Now we're going to find the sum of each arithmetic series given the sigma notation. So we start at 1, and we're going to 5. We're going to take the first number, 1, substitute it into n, so 1 squared plus, then we take the next number, which is 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. We end at 5. So that would be 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25, and that's going to give us, we add this together, 55. Let's look at the next example. We're going to start at 3, and we're going to go to 6. So I'm going to start by putting 3 in for n squared. So that's going to be 1 plus 3 squared plus 1 plus, I put 4 in, squared, plus 1 plus 5 squared, plus 1 plus 6 squared. So that's going to be 1 plus 9, which would be 10, plus that's going to be 1 plus 16, which would be 17, 1 plus 25, which would be 26, and 1 plus 36 would be 37. If we add those together, we get 90. Let's look at the third example. 
the third example, I start at one, I end at six, and it's just two. There's not a variable. So it's going to be two plus two plus two plus two. I would have one, two, three, four, five, six. So there wasn't a variable. I add those together and I get 12. In the next set of examples, we're given the series and we're supposed to write each sum using sigma notation. Let's draw sigma. And if we look at the series, it looks like the counting numbers raised to the third power, one, two, three, and so on to seven. So we know we're going to start at one and we're going to end at seven. And n, I have to use the same variable as my index, it's going to be n raised to the third power. Let's look at the next example. Well, it looks like the counting numbers from 3 to 77. So we're going to start at 3. So n is equal to 3, and we're going to end at 77. And we're going to take the square root of each of them. Let's look at the next one. Well, it looks like the counting numbers starting at 1, ending at 20, and it's just going to be n. Let's look at the next example. If I look at the numerator, it looks like I had the counting numbers, and it looks like I start at 1 and it looks like I end at 13. In the numerator, I would have n, the counting numbers, and the denominator, I would have one more than what the numerator is.